in the context of our everyday life experience as people who are negotiating hard transitions, unwelcome changes of many kinds, not only to a loved one uh, or of a loved one to death, uh, but many forms of uh, life changing loss. We, we orient to the loss when we do what Sigmund Freud called Trauerarbeit, the work of grieving, focusing on the character of the loss, the associated emotions, as we try to in some way manage the intrusions or waves of grief that will sometimes wash over us, like sometimes a storm surge associated with Hurricane Irma. Um, we may be at risk of being devastated or carried away by it. We're attempting then to engage in a kind of emotion regulation at one level, while at another level, we're struggling to relocate the deceased in our lives now. Where is this person, right? Where is this maybe position, this place that once defined an important kind of anchor of meaning in my life? As I stare now from the edge of the world that I'm now in, into the devastation of the world that was, how do I somehow accommodate those changing realities? And as we attempt to do this, we tend to deny and push away from the call of the world. We don't want to hear that call. We draw down into our grief. We seek out the kind of trusted connections with others who we believe can hear what others will not. And so in the privacy of our own hearts, in the privacy of trusted relationships, we attempt to process the loss itself. But that's only part of the picture because at other times, the world will grab us by the collar and pull us over into necessary restoration. We have to, in some way, re-engage life. Our children still need to eat. We still need to be able to get some sleep. We have to step back out into a world that needs us and that we need, even if we carry into that world an unspeakable degree of heaviness, sadness, anxiety, um, and hopelessness. And as we step into that world, we step toward what they call the restoration orientation, the attempt to put together a world that works again from the fragments of the old. It is a process of rebuilding. And sometimes we have to replace foundation stones in that world in order to again have a secure base on which to stand. As we do this, we do new things. We try out new roles. We reformulate our roles and goals in light of the loss that we have suffered. Right? Life cannot be the same. We have to find a new normal. And as we do this, we necessarily deny and avoid the call of our grief. So denial and avoidance of both the grief and of necessary changes are an inherent part of grieving. They are not pathological. They are just part of the path. And as suggested by the red line arrow, the core feature of this process is an oscillation, a kind of pendulum swing, back and forth between these two orientations, where gradually we may spend, if our adaptation goes well, relatively more time in restoration and less time absorbed, absorbed in the grief, but the grief will always remain available to us as a kind of room where we knock on the door and can re-enter uh, that space of grieving, or one where we hear the knock and call of grief, sometimes when we least expect it. This is a model that I think is quite helpful for dealing with transitions of many kinds. It acknowledges that both orienting to the loss and 
orienting toward restoration are a normal and healthy aspect of grieving. Time needs to be made for both of these things. And the overall movement through these dual processes of coping with bereavement is one that gives us greater and greater choice about how and when we engage each of these. So we are not just unconsciously pulled into the grief when we are not expecting it. Indeed, we might invite that. We might make an appointment in some sense with our grief. At other times, we give ourselves permission to not orient to the grief and to reorient to a changed world. 